Okay, so when you have Premiere open up for the first time, um, you want to open up a new project or open an existing project. So you ha you'll get this screen that shows up. In this case, we're going to do a new project. And the one thing about Premiere is it references the files that you're going to use. It does not embed those files into the program as you make your project in Premiere. So the important thing is you have to know the files that you're going to be using in Premiere, you have to know where they are in your computer in relationship to the Premiere file you're working on. Because Premiere will be looking for those files to bring them into the program as you're building your project. Um, but if you go and move them somewhere else in your computer, say, hey, I want to store these over here, Premiere will start looking for them. You can relocate them and find them, but just understand that the the files that you're working with are not tied into Premiere. Premiere references them for where they are when you initially bring them into the program from your computer. So what I'm going to do is save this new project in the same folder that has my animatic that I, we just downloaded. So I'm keeping them all together in a single folder. We want to keep these together so if we move that folder around the project file and our art assets uh, the elements that we're bringing in, which would be the visuals and our audio, will all stay together in a single folder, a single folder complex. So what I want to do is click on New Project, and then I'll get this come up. So what I'm going to call this is um, LP5, um, and then I'll write Test Animatic, and you guys can use the same name also. Because it's only a test, and it's it's Stinky Shoe and Coach LaRue. So we're going to choose that. Then we want to choose where are we going to save this file. So location. So we need to click on where it says Browse over here on the right. And we'll find out, and I want to find that folder um, and save it inside that folder, that animatic folder. So our, my project and that are all together. So I'm going to look on my computer, and you need to find it on your computer, where you have that folder you just downloaded. So I'm going to put it inside of that folder, so I'm going to open that folder. We have our audio and our frames, and out in the open here, I'll save my Premiere project. So my audio and my visuals, the frames, the storyboard frames, will all be together in this one main folder. So I'll hit choose. And then I'll say, and the rest of this, uh, the default settings, we don't need to change any of these other settings. We'll just leave those the same. So the first things that we changed, we named it, and then we chose where we want to save it. And that is important that you do choose where you want to save your Premiere project. You, you want to be very clear where it is on your computer and it's going to be in relationship to the files that you're going to import into the project. So hit OK. And we get our interface comes up. And what we have is kind of broken up. We have our source. If we're looking at files, we'll get into this a little deeper. Premiere said is a robust program. Today I'm just going to show you how to work it for doing our animatic. Um, and then up here, the program, this is going to show us what our output image is going to look like. Over here, mine is uh, set on effects. If you're not seeing it, you want to go to where it says project and click on that tab. Over here, it says project. And this is where we're going to import the uh, files that we want to work with. In this case, will be our storyboard frames and any audio files that we have um, in, to bring in to match up with our storyboard frames. We're going to import those in to Premiere. So in, when you do that in Premiere, you don't open files into Premiere. You import them into Premiere. So we're going to go to where it says Premiere Pro, and then we're going to go File. And instead of Open, we're going to look for Import down here about three-quarters of the way down. So we're going to import our files. So we click on the import. 
and now we need to find and because I saved it in this folder it brought me right to where my other files are so if you did like I did and saved it in that main folder you'll see stinky shoe audio and stinky test frames very appealing names so in this case, I'm going to hold the shift key and select both of those folders. The nice thing about Premiere, we can import things in, in folders. So when we bring them into the project, they will be organized. We're going to have our audio folder and our frames folder. We have them both there. So if I select the two of those folders and click import, we should be able to bring them in. And it did. So in my project window down here in the lower left, you see that it brought in the stinky shoe audio and the stinky shoe frames. So what I'm going to do is where it says stinky shoe frames or test frames, I'm going to there's a little triangle to it. I'm going to click on that triangle to open up that folder. Shows me the contents of that folder, and it is important that you do uh, number your frames in sequential order when you are saving them off. So in this case, I got one through eight. So we don't have too much to do here, um, but we have it. So I'm going to select the first one, hold my shift key, and select the last one. So what that does is select everything between the first one I clicked and the last one. So I have all eight of those files selected. Okay, so now that we've selected these files, what we're going to do is take them, and, and when you grab them, so they're all selected, grab them by the icon. So that little icon to the left is stinky test, one, two, three, that icon image. And we're going to take those and drag those. So where it says drop media to create a sequence. And what it did is created a timeline for us. So the timeline wasn't there. There's other ways to create this timeline, but this um, is going to be our most effective way. So I wanted to bring it outside of that folder. It just took a little bit to find that right spot without dropping it in a folder. Um, but I'm going to name it. I'm going to call it my stinky two, stinky test. And if I uh, double click on that, I can rename it. Instead of saying 08, I'm just going to call that animatic. And what that is, is I created a sequence. And this icon shows that we created a sequence. It made it the exact size of my... Um, images that I started with mine in this case it's telling me there's 720 by 540 so I made it um, more of a traditional um, uh, 3x4 format but I renamed it so there we have that as my sequence what it did it, along the top we have our playhead our timeline indicator this blue arrow here as we move it across the timeline, we see that it put in all the storyboard frames in a row. We can hit the play button, and it plays it. By default, it puts in each picture for five seconds. So that's a default feature, and we're going to shrink and lengthen those images to match the audio that we have. So let's see what we have here, so I don't have to play the whole thing, but you can see that that's what it did. So I want to match it to audio. I have the audio in my audio folder, so I'm going to open up my audio folder. And the audio I want is GA Leica Scene 4 09112.wave. So Premiere could take in WAV files or it could take in MP4 files or mp3 files, excuse me, mp3 files it could bring in, mp4 or movie files, it could take those also, but as far as sound, it could take in an mp3 or a WAV file. With this file, I'm going to grab it again by the icon, and you can see it's a WAV form icon, and if we look at our timeline, we have a V1, that's our video, by default to put it on video number one, we have multiple tracks, we have V2, V3, and we can add up to 100 tracks of video if we want to. Layer different things up as we go um, by clicking and adding a track. We don't need to do that now, but our videos are located on the top area of our timeline. And then our audio tracks are on the lower level. So we have A1, A2, A3, and again, we can add more audio tracks if we need them. So... We, 
by default it gives us three video tracks and three audio tracks to work with and because we're bringing ours in separate or videos these still frames don't have audio associated with them some movies will sometimes so when you bring a movie into the timeline it will put it into the video and audio at the same time but for this we need to bring our audio in so I'm gonna grab the audio I want to use which is I grab it by the icon here and I'm gonna drag it over to audio one and I get these white triangles I'm gonna bring it so it starts right at the beginning of my timeline so see if you can bring that in at that point 